Hi, one of the most important properties of Hausdorff measures and something that is used often to sell Hausdorff measures as something natural and useful despite their initially complicated definition is the fact that in Rn the n-dimensional Hausdorff measure agrees with the Lebesgue measure. So in this video, I want to go over a beautiful proof from the book Measure Theory and Fine Properties of Functions, um, written by Evans and Gary Ippie. This is kind of a very well known book in the in the field. And uh, to make things uh, the statement precise and even stronger, I will be working with the Lebesgue Alder measure, which is defined for any set, not just measurable subsets. Uh, the definition is as usual. You cover the set by countable union of boxes. And here, boxes will always have parallel sides to one of the Euclidean coordinates. And this um, comes from the fact that LN, by its definition, is a multiplication of lower dimensional Lebesgue measures. And uh, one thing about this Lebesgue outer measure is that initially you want to, the definition is taking any boxes, but because you can subdivide boxes, you can in the definition restrict to coverings only by, by squares, by, by cubes, which means they have equal size on all, uh, all directions. So this will play some role later on. These are easy facts to confirm, and uh, I have also, for completeness, put the definition of the Hausdorff content, which is infinity. The difference here is you cover by arbitrary sets, and instead of looking at Lebesgue measure, you look at some quantity in terms of diameter of these EI. If you insist that diameter of EI be less than delta, for every i, then what you get is h, then, then you end up computing h and delta. And once you let delta go to zero, you get the full measure, uh, full Hausdorff measure hn. So just some easy recall. Of course, I have the full playlist on the Hausdorff measures. Now, how does the proof go? Let's first look at uh, why such a proof is not easy. Number one, the first difference I mentioned was that cubes that are parallel and nice versus arbitrary sets. The other one is even beyond that, here we compute ln measure of the cubes, which by definition is just multiplication of the sides, while in the Hausdorff measure, you compute diameter to power n. So what is, how can one go between them? How can one compare them? I'm not gonna um, kind of copy paste what is in the book into here and I'll be fast as a result. The, the key ingredient, uh, which is so important to this proof that is, it is kind of synonymous with equality of Hausdorff measure to the big measure, and that is the isodiametric inequality. Okay, if I write down this inequality right now, you will never remember that. Instead, um, if you are ever lost in a desert and your life depends on remembering what isodiametric inequality is, um, follow this. Isodiametric means same diameter. Isodiametric inequality means of the sets that have the same diameter, the Euclidean ball has the biggest Lebesgue measure. So let's look at Lebesgue measure of an arbitrary set, and this is outer Lebesgue measure. Then diameter of E divided by two, you can find the ball of radius diameter of E divided by two. And that ball has the same diameter as E. Now the claim of this isodiametric inequality is that Lebesgue measure of E will be less than the Lebesgue measure of 
that ball with the diameter equal to E. So, and what is Lebesgue measure of a ball? That's some constant, which we have, we have denoted by Wn, and uh, radius to power n, which will be diameter of B, which is equal to diameter of E, divided by 2 to power n. So remove this intermediate part, and what you get is the diametric inequality. Um, so this is the key link between the two notions of diameter and the Lebesgue measure. And the whole proof depends, of course, on, on this very non-trivial inequality. Um, the book spends some pages on proving this first, and we will take that for granted for this video. Having this tool up our sleeves, let's see how the proof of the theorem goes. Okay. Um, to estimate the Lebesgue measure of A from above, so suppose A is covered by EI, and I will drop the I going to infinity, when I write just I, it means overall natural numbers, is any covering of A. We have uh, in one of the videos um, that you can take closed coverings without loss in generality. So if you're worried about non-measurable sets, you can assume that the, these EIs are closed, but with the outer Lebesgue measure, the following computation will just be, be precise and accurate. So what, what we get then is that from simply subadditivity of the Lebesgue measure, this will be less than the summation of the Lebesgue measures of E's, EI's. Now we bring in the isodiametric inequality to replace these with omega n one half of the diameter of di to power, to power n's. But, but now this is true for every covering, so if we take infimum, over all coverings, uh, we end up with ln of a less than or equal to h n infinity of a. Uh, because we had no restriction on how big the diameters are, and this one is always less than h n of a. So that establishes one direction of inequalities. So we have to now prove the reverse. So here's a, a, a funny um, incidence, let's say. And that is um, before proving that h n is less than or equal to l n, we first have to prove, and this is the first time I see something like this, a weaker h n less than or equal to some constant times l n. So, um, and the reason for this is we will have some measure zero set that we will not be able to deal with, a uh, Lebesgue null set. So we want to know in that case automatically that hn of that set is also zero. And in that case, it won't matter if this cn is there or not. We just want to show that hn is zero 
knowing that the right hand side is zero. Um, why is this significantly easier to prove? Is because when you have a cube, then there is a ball inscribing it, uh, or circumscribing it, just going around it, and diameter of that ball is uh, just a, a constant number, the cn times the side length of the cube. We don't care how what that number is, although it's easily computable. Uh, with this in hand, uh, fix some epsilon positive, then there exists a covering that is um, almost realizing ln of a. So ln of a is infimum, so if we add some epsilon, there is some particular member of the set over which we are infimizing that is less than this. So there's some covering by cubes of, L of a for which this happens. Um, now from, from this picture that there is a ball containing this cube with that control on the diameter, um, this will be, so let me write the right hand side, this will be bigger than or equal to summation over i, divide by this constant, and then the back measure of the bi. So replace the cube with the ball. But this, uh, this is just equal to one over cn, omega n, that, because we know measure of balls is diameter of the ball over two to the power n. And uh, this is, this, this bi is also a covering of my set a. And therefore, by definition, this summation is bigger than h in infinity of a. I could go back and say that I can find the covering by cubes whose diameters are less than delta and instead of this infinity have any delta and then I let delta I get hn uh, instead of hn infinity. But I don't need that because if Lebesgue measure of the set is then zero, then hn infinity of a is zero, but we've seen uh, that in very broad generality, in any metric space, any set, this would imply that in fact hn is zero. hn in general could be much larger than hn infinity, but the zero case is special. Okay, now that we have the weaker inequality that takes care of null sets, we are ready to prove and that we can take Cn to be one. We wanna prove that for every set A and uh, for every delta. Oh, well, let's not worry about that for now, that um, hn is less than or equal to ln, hn of a less than ln of a. Okay, so to show this, uh, we start with, give me, one second, exactly. So <clears throat> we fix epsilon positive, then I think we have to find actually delta covering. Then for every delta positive, there exists a covering of A by cubes um, such that diameter of the cubes are less than or equal to delta. This is easy to do because you can subdivide every cube into tinier cubes. Um, you can divide into 
one million pieces so definitely you can make sure that the diameter of individual ones is less than delta um, okay so there, there is a covering such that ln is almost achieved so ln this very this is actually a copy of what we did above no equality summation over i of ln of qi okay now comes another another <clears throat> fact which we use without proof if you have a cube then uh, it's in, you you can find countably many disjoint and closed balls so these balls are closed balls they contain their boundaries so there exists a sequence of closed balls now uh, let's fix i up here and it's j j going from one to infinity so closed disjoint balls um, such that they fill up the cube uh, in a measure theoretic sense that means no measure is left once you remove these bij's union over j from cube only a zero measure is left <laughs> okay so we have a union of cubes here satisfying this condition and now for every cube we find this union of balls we, we do it for every cube then what we have is that the summation of ln of these cubes is equal Two. So, for every i, instead of ln of q q i, we can write summation of ln of these balls that filled it up from j. So, uh, we because of that we can ignore the part where they don't cover. And now again we use the fact that we know how to <laughs> measure the balls. So this will be omega n diameter of bij divided by 2 to power n and this one is bigger than or equal to <clears throat> so union of bj's so here's important union of bij's freeze i and do union of bij's uh, of course covers itself and this summation then by definition is an upper bound for the hn of the union of b i j's j and because every ball has diameter less than delta this is actually an estimate for h and delta now i claim that these union of b i j's cover q i except for a set of ln measure but that set of ln measure remember gives also h and delta zero in fact hn zero but hn is bigger than that that's where we use this weaker part that we proved that that is used here to show that i can add back the, that remainder here qi minus union B, bij so that i can put here again q uh, qi sorry union over j covers qi so um i know i might be over explaining but here you have q's then you go to the balls you miss part of your set but that part has ln measure so you can add it back here to go back to the cubes and uh, that almost finishes everything because <clears throat> this this is by subadditivity bigger than um, h 
and delta of A because union of QIs uh, is a covering of A is bigger than A so here we're not seeing it as a covering just union of QI is a superset of A and that that is it because delta was arbitrary so let delta go to zero and you end up remember this this is also bounded by ln plus epsilon so what you ended up proving is that ln of a plus epsilon is bigger than or equal to h n of a and this is bigger than remember every h and delta including infinity and then epsilon was arbitrary now let epsilon go to zero and uh, this completes the proof that ln of a is bigger than or equal to hn of a the reverse had been proven already and this finishes the beautiful theorem that outer Lebesgue measure agrees with the Hausdorff measure. Remember that if a set is measurable, the outer Lebesgue measure is just the usual Lebesgue measure. And uh, in particular, for every Borel set, this is true. And that's it. Hopefully you liked it. If you have any questions, let me know.